Uh, send your pamphlets. We're going to be in Haggai today. Um, chapter 1, starting with verse 1. Did a study not too long ago uh, with you guys on self examination, uh, which is something we have to take a stop, stop sometimes, take a step back, and really examine your life. Are you pleasing to God? Are you displeasing to God? Is there something that you're doing um, and you just can't quite figure out why things don't ever quite work out for you? And uh, this is a really, really good tool. And I've used it on myself many times over the years. And unfortunately, some of those things that I've made mistakes on, I can, you know, continue to repeat them. Um, you know, a lot of times when things aren't going good, we like to, we like to blame God. Now, I mean, I ain't talking about just literally, I blame you, God, for it, but you're thinking, but what am I doing wrong? You know, what am I doing wrong? Um, so this scripture, kindly, like I said, it's about procrastination and self-examination. And if you are a procrastinator, then you better be self-examining yourself uh, because God does not please God. Um, so Haggai chapter 1, give you a little bit of history of what's going on here. Judah had been released from captivity at this time. You ever noticed how they were always in captivity? Judah and the Israelites both. Why? Because they continued to backslide. That's right. And instead of learning their lesson from the first time that he punished them, they would go right back to doing the same thing again. Are we guilty of that today? Amen. We are guilty of that today. And I made the statement that if old Job had taken a step back and self-examined what was going on in his life, he would have realized all he had to do was go to God to start with. But don't think God didn't allow that to happen as an example for us. Um, and to me, that is one of the most powerful examples that he said. He did not go to God. As much as he was righteous, he loved God. Uh, God loved him. I mean, God was bragging to Satan about him. Pat, what about my boy Job over here? As righteous as he was, his life started falling apart and he lost everything and was listening to his three knucklehead friends who didn't have a spiritual bone in their body were giving him bad advice. And if he had taken a step back, why didn't he go to God? Because God could stop it. You know, he should have went to God and said, Okay, God, what is it that I'm doing wrong? Why is this happening to me? And quite frankly, I have, like I said many times in my life, had to take a step back and do a little bit of self-examination. Alright, so they had been released from captivity. Darius, which was uh, the king at the time of Persia, had instructed them to rebuild God's house 15 to 18 years had done gone by. Now when I read that, I'm thinking, okay, so they got released from captivity. They're out of it. Why didn't they go back home? Why didn't they go back to Jerusalem and start building Jerusalem back? Because sometimes we get too comfortable in our circumstances. They get used to being treated a certain way and living a certain way, and all of a sudden you think that that's just normal. You understand what I'm saying? We are bad to get comfortable in our circumstances instead of doing what we need to do to move forward. So instead of going back when they had the opportunity some 15 to 18 years later did it take them to go back home and start that work, they were procrastinating instead of doing what they were supposed to be doing. Now do you ever procrastinate to not want to do something that you know you should be doing? You know. You know that you know. You know. And we like to procrastinate. Well, like I said, that's not real pleasing to God in a lot of different situations. Um, so anyway, so God has finally gotten tired of waiting, so here He is. His house is lying in shambles. Lying in shambles. So what are the Israelites, or what is Judah doing? They're working on their own houses. Their own fancy paneled houses, they're, they're building, they're working on it 15 to 18 years, folks. And God's house laid in shambles. So God finally speaks through Ad Haggai because He is not pleased. Now, in the spiritual sense of this, I know we're talking in the physical, but let's look at the spiritual sense in this. What is the true house of God today? 
Jesus Christ. He is the temple. Now, do you see what's going on in the world today? Is God's house not lying in shambles today? The things that are going on in churches today don't have anything to do with what's in the Word of God. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is to go out and, and get out and hit the roads and witness and talk about God and bring people into the house of God. God's house is in shambles and it is our responsibility. If you call yourself a Christian today, what is a Christian? It's to be Christ-like. It's to try to walk in His footsteps. If you ever have any doubt about what you should do in a certain situation, say, what would Jesus do? Now, when I was coming up, we had our youth ministry. That was the big thing. It was WWJD. What would Jesus do? Leaving no doubt, what are we supposed to do? Are you supposed to sit on your hands? Are you supposed to not go out and share the free gift of grace that was given to you and me? We've gotten too complacent. We've gotten too used to our circumstances. Now, there's a lot going on with a lot of different people in this church. And me and Jerry always pretty much know most of the time because we are there and we are you know, in consultation with them. And I know that there's a lot going on in your life today. But see, we get wrapped up in that. And we get comfortable in our circumstance. Well, it's just you know another crappy day. Oh well. You know, what burden is God going to lay on me today? Well, that's a bad thing to say. Everybody's got a lot going on. Now you might ask yourself, well, I love the Lord. I serve the Lord. I go to church every day. Did Christ not say we were going to have trials and tribulations? Yes. It is yes. absolutely a part of this house. Now how you handle that is totally up to you. If you want to be a miserable soul and get up each and every day, oh God, here's another day. You know, you can do that or you can get off your butt, change your attitude, rebuke Satan out of your life, and get up and move forward. You know what will make you feel better? is when you get up and go help somebody else that's got a problem. Then you quit thinking about your problem. Yep. You know, give it to God and let God have your problems today. But instead, we get too comfortable in our circumstances. Oh, well, it's just another day. So here at God's house sat. They had the foundation put, but there were no walls. And it was not rebuilt. It was just laying in shambles. And for 15 to 18 years, they procrastinated. And they wanted to say, well, we didn't have enough materials. Where did they get the materials from to build their own houses? They had the materials. They were just not doing what they were supposed to be doing. Let me ask you a question. In the spiritual sense, are you given the materials today to build God's house? Yes. Right there. Since the beginning of time, we've got the materials to go out and make a difference in this world and witness to people and talk to them about Jesus. Now, when I was growing up, you know you'd be embarrassed to go witness somebody and try to talk to them about God because they thought you was a goody two-shoe. You know, and this, that, and the other. They didn't want no part of that. I can't have no fun if I'm a Christian. Uh, that's not true. But we're grown-ups now, are we not? So, when we were children, we acted like children, but when you have grown up, then you need to act like an adult, a mature Christian in the eyes of God, and know that there is absolutely no shame. It is an honor. It is a reward and a privilege to go out and talk to people about God. Now, there's a lot of ways to do that. I'm not talking about you just walking up to somebody and saying, do you know Jesus? You don't got to do that because you might scare them off right off the bat. But you just start talking to somebody, I always use Walmart because it's been way too much time in there. But you know, come up to you just be talking to somebody in line. It's nothing to start a conversation with people. You know why? Because everybody's going through stuff. Everybody's wanting to share their story. Everybody's wanting somebody to talk to and I mean, I could be standing in line, they're going to tell me their life history before I walk away from that conversation. And don't you think for one minute I didn't slide in there? Hey, give it to God. Pray to God. And then their eyes kind of light up. It's not hard to do. So don't make some excuse. Well, you don't understand, brother. I just don't talk too good. Neither did Moses. Look how he used Moses. He can use each and every one of us. And, and God's house is in the shambles today. I'm telling you, you don't know how blessed you are to be at Old Union Community Church. Amen. Yeah, brother, you're just saying that because you're the minister. No, I'm not. I've never been a part of a place like this in my life. 
where you can come and learn the Word of God and things are done according to God's Word. And you can come and be in fellowship. Now you go out and make a mistake one night and you find out about it or whatever, we don't judge you when you walk back through the doors. You know what we do? We don't judge you. We love you. Love our brothers and sisters through their trials and tribulations. We have a fantastic place here. Luke 14, 23 says, The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the hedges and the highways and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. That is what we are supposed to be doing today as Christians. You know, I got to thinking about our little get-together last week. We had 60 people in attendance that day. The thing about it is, is if everybody that really goes to this church would ever be here all at the same time, we would have had 90 butts in these seats last week. Can I get an amen? amen. But guess what? We're all wrapped up in our problems. We're all wrapped up in our troubles. Oh, poor me. Instead of making the time to, and it is important, and I understand that we've all got lives. I understand that we've all got problems and circumstances that keeps us from coming to church. But it ought to be a priority in your life. Leave your circumstances at home and come and worship God. Does it not make you feel better? Does your tank not get filled when you come in here? And you got a little bit more energy and a little bit more gas to go a little bit further? Yes! Because we get filled and we get fed to make the journey. That's why it is so important. And we cannot leave God's house in shambles. Alright, so let's pick it up. Haggai chapter 1 verse 1. Got too many notes today. I don't get them messed up. Alright, verse 1. In the second year of Darius, the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying. Um, this was actually the first time that God had spoke through a prophet since the, the captivity had began. Now the Lord waited very patiently for them to do what they needed to do. Is He waiting very patiently for you to get something done and accomplished in your life today that is hindering your prayers? That's what you got to ask yourself. Um, I'll tell you what, self-examination uh, is very, very important. Verse 2, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say the time has not come. The time that the Lord's house shouldn't be built. 15 to 18 years. That's a long time to procrastinate. Amen. Uh, and I say this, and it hurts a lot of people's feelings, but God don't like lazy people. That's right. Now when I say that, people say, you hear what that preacher said? Because God don't like lazy people. Truth hurts, don't it? Because He does not. Why is that, you think? Because if you're too lazy to take care of yourself and too lazy to take care of your house, too lazy to take care of your vehicle, too lazy to do anything, God knows you're going to be too lazy to do anything for Him. Right? We tend to get comfortable in our circumstances. Some people think it's just a new norm, but no, it's not. It's just a new mess you've created in your life. That's what you're doing. That's all you're doing is creating one mess after another when you don't self-examine yourself. You know, the foundation has already been laid for us today. That's right. We've already got that foundation. It's Jesus Christ. It's the rock, which is what we are supposed to build our knowledge and faith upon Jesus Christ. All we have to do is get out and build on it. Get out and build on the body of Christ. Verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, It is time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste. Again, God's house is laying waste today. I know I've preached this before. I've been in churches all over the United States, and I promise you that the word of God is not being taught like it's supposed to be in God's house. It's more about social status. It's more about the who's who. 
It's more about uh, who's got the most money and the nicest car. It's more about getting butts in seats so that they can put dollars in the plate. That's not what this is supposed to be about. This is supposed to be about saving souls. So, sealed is paneled. They were building their own fancy houses. Then when God asked them why his house laid waste, they said they didn't have no materials. You say, you ain't got no materials today. Boy, you're lying. Because we got all the material we need right here to help save souls. Can I get an amen? Amen. God is saying, you've got time for yourself, but you don't have time for me. There's a lot of that that goes on in the world today too. Well, brother, you just don't understand. I ain't got time. God forbid that something happened tragic in your life and you're hanging from the cliff and you're begging God to save you and God says, it's my day off. I ain't got time. Amen. You ever found yourself in a situation where you, where you never called on God for anything and then all of a sudden you need a bailing out and you're screaming and crying for God? He's not necessarily going to be there for you. Mark 2.17, Jesus Christ said unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen. He's already got us. We already love Him. We're serving Him. We're trying to do what's right uh, each and every day. He's not come to call us because we are of the body of Christ and we are witnessing to people. He came to call the sinners to repentance. Don't get me wrong, because we love the Lord we know what the process is. When you mess up, I hope that you are repenting of your sins. Don't wait a week. I've heard people say, well, yeah, once a week I, I go ahead and ask for giving my sin. You might sin five minutes before you die. Why would you wait a week? Can you imagine how many sins you've got racked up in about a week? You think you won the lottery except for you going the wrong direction. <clears throat> I did an example a couple of weeks ago in my, in my sermon on James chapter 2. And it's talking about not being a respecter of persons. Now, when I wear and preach in, there's a lot of churches that probably wouldn't want you in their church looking like I do. Because they think you're supposed to be around a real nice suit. You know, get all fancied up. Boy, because the better you look, the more money you're going to put in the plate. That's not the way it's supposed to be. We're not supposed to be a respected for person. It doesn't matter if somebody comes through that door and they're a garbage man, and then you got somebody else on there that's a doctor making a bunch of money. But you know what? A lot of churches will teach they, they, they will treat the garbage man differently. Amen. I got news for you. I praise God for the garbage man. They get rid of our stinky garbage, don't they? Everybody is important in the plan of God. Everybody is important and has their own gift. We're not to judge anybody based on what color they are. You're not based on what you drive or what you wear or what kind of house you have. You think God cares about any of that? Of course He doesn't. A lot of people ask me how come I, I wear jeans and boots and all this kind of stuff. I, as far as I know, the Bible says come as you are. Now, could you imagine what them old boys wore? I mean, they wore a dress. They wore robes and and all those things, they weren't dressed up fancy with $300 pair of shoes on. The, you're not worried about what I'm wearing. You're worried about the message that you're supposed to receive in here today. Right? Absolutely. Alright, verse 6. No, verse 5. I caught that one myself. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts. I love this one single simple verse right here. Consider your ways. Consider your ways. This will be utilized five times in this scripture. Number five means grace. Grace is the unmerited favor, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ that we did nothing to earn, but He gave it to us. So when's the last time you've done a little self-examination? He's saying stop. Meditate. Take a step back. Come to me and pray to me and evaluate yourself to understand why things are going the way they are going in your life. What if you procrastinated to the point of dilapidation? I know me and Lee was talking over the weekend. 
I lost a place out here on Beach Street. I've shared that before, about 45 acres worth of land, a two-story, 2,500 square foot house with a wraparound porch that I built with my own two hands. I lost it. I lost it. I lost my land and everything. And in part of that, there's several reasons why I know that God allowed me to lose that. First, I got all puffed up and didn't think I needed no more because I was rolling high. I mean, I had business hand over fist. I had 12 employees. I was rocking and rolling pretty soon. I didn't think I needed God no more. Whoo, man, you talk about a bad mistake. But procrastination to the point of dilapidation. I wasn't taking care of my house. It had gotten so bad and so many things had gone wrong and not got repaired. And here I'm in the business now. But now I give my wife an excuse why I do it all week long. I don't want to do it when I get home. That's just the biggest bunch of crap. It was just an excuse. So in part, the reason I lost my home is because I didn't take care of what God blessed me with. I procrastinated. I made every excuse in the book why I didn't do it. If you do not take care of what God gives you and blesses you with, He will take it back from you. The Lord giveth and the Lord hath taken away. That was a very hard lesson to learn. What have you done for God's house lately? Now we do a bunch of work days here. You know? And 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 it shows. I mean, man, some of y'all didn't see this when we first started off, but man, has God been good to us. And we, we hold work days so that we can come and improve on God's house. We're supposed to take care of this house, folks. But what have you done other than that? What have you done as far as building the body of Christ? When's the last time you talked to somebody about Jesus? When's the last time? You don't even have to do that. I, I like to use Dave as an example because he's got a trailer and he's got a big old diesel truck and you get broke down on the side of the road. I don't care what time of night it is or what time of day it is and you call all day and I'm sure he's grumbling saying, oh God, it's Jimmy Pickett again. Anyway, but you guess it. Guess what? You get up. He'll get his stuff together, and he'll go bail you out each and every time. Now, is that not out of being a witness unto Christ? That's right. Yes, that's an act of love. So I'm not talking about just going out and talking to Jesus. Go out and be the light of the world. Let the light of God shine through you. Hold the door open for somebody. You see somebody down, and say, "Hey, are you okay?" We can make that difference. You're building on the body of Jesus Christ when you do those things. Alright, verse 6. Now this is another one. Highlight it. Underline it. Memorize it. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag full of holes. Are you a doer of the Word, or are you just a hearer of the Word? Because you're absolutely wasting God's time and you're wasting your own time to come in here and sit in these pews and listen to this message delivered to you from the Holy Spirit and then walk out them doors and don't apply it to your life. James 1.22 But be ye doers of the Word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. Way too many pew potatoes in churches today to do absolutely nothing with whatever it is that they take from their experience when they go out into the world. We've got to be building on the house of God, which is the body of Jesus Christ. That verse is saying, you know what? God will put some holes in your bucket. That's right. You think you're doing real good and you're rolling, you got money and all these things, and you ain't you ain't doing no nothing for God, he'll poke a few holes in that bucket. And as fast as you work and as hard as you work, you're filling it up, but you're not giving God his time. You are not coming to worship God. You are not putting God first in everything you're putting in there in that bucket and it's just running out the bottom. Right. A lot of people work hard, but it seems like it's never enough. Now I'm going to break that verse down just a little bit. I can give you a perfect, a perfect example of this with the holes in the bucket. 
I've learned a lot of lessons. You know, no, no older than I am, thirty something. You know. Um, <laughs> hey, 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 hey! I've learned a lot of lessons, and in part, I know that's why God called me to do um, this work. So I, I, I tell you my own personal experience. You know, I work my tail off. I work. I, I, I don't really, per se, me or my wife, either one really get a day off. It's seven day a week between the ministry and the business. We're always doing something, we're always working or whatever. So, you know, it's like, oh my God, man, we are working ourselves to death. It's around the clock, it's seven days a week. But yet, it's, we're not getting ahead. Why aren't we getting ahead? We're not putting no money back, you know, for, for retirement and stuff. Boy, but we out there just to work and filling it, but filling it, but, right? So, you have to take a step back sometimes and pray to God and say, okay, what is it that I'm doing wrong in my life, Lord? But the thing is, we like to blame Him first, you know. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say, God, I'm doing all this work. I work every day. My wife works every day. We don't never catch a break. Hey, we're serving you each and every day. We're out there building on the body of Christ. We're making videos. We're counseling people. We're witnessing the people, God. Why am I not getting ahead? You know, God says, why, why ain't you getting ahead? Do a little self-examination. There were some areas of my life that I was lacking discipline in. And one of those is when I was making all that money and I was rolling and all that, I wasn't using it right. I, I was not using it the way that I should have been, do, been using it. And one of those things, like a piece of equipment, I'd just go out and buy a piece of equipment wouldn't even include her in the decision. I'd hide it from her. I'd love equipment. So I just go out and buy that equipment with that money and start making all these investments without her knowing it. Well, first of all, I was dishonoring my wife. Take a step back. You dishonor your spouse, you can forget your blessing. You can forget God blessing you or your relationship if you disrespect or dishonor your spouse. So I was going behind her back and I was wheeling and dealing and I was doing all these things. So that was the first thing coming about. I've been dishonoring my wife with that. I was taking money and spending it, blowing it left and right, being a big king, you know. I wasn't doing it right. So I had to make some changes in my life and got some discipline in the areas that I need to be disciplined in. And one of them is to even be more disciplined in the Word, being more disciplined to my prayers, being more disciplined in my physical, uh, you know, exercise and stuff like that. I got all way overweight. There's so many things that you can really self-examine yourself over. But anyway, so guess what? I made all those adjustments after I thought I was already doing so much for God, you know. And all of a sudden, now we, we're seeing it coming. You know, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We finally, for the fruits of our labor, you know, start to see it. So there's a perfect example for you right there. I mean, it might be not something that's too big to you, but it's big to God. What is it that you're doing today that you feel like you're not where you should be you're not making what you should make. You're not being blessed like you should. It's not God. I promise you that. It's us. It's us. And only you can know that. So let's break this verse down just a little bit. It says, You have so much and bring in a uh, little. You work real hard every day, but it's only enough to get by. Have you been there? Some of you may be there today because I was there myself. So what are you sowing today? Are you taking care of what God has blessed you with? Are you out doing any work? Are you letting the light shine? Alright? Um, like Galatians 6, 7 says, For whatsoever a man soweth, so shall he reap. Folks, what you do in this life, it will come back to you whether it's good or bad. So what are you sowing in your life today? Verse 2. I mean, not verse 2. The second part of this, you eat but you not have enough to drink. God makes sure that you're fed. You make sure you got enough to pay your light bill. But it's only just enough. What is it that you're doing this pleasing to God? Alright, the third part of that was, but you are not filled with drink. You are clothed, but there's none warm. He's not going to let you freeze to death. God's not going to let you freeze to death. He's not going to let you go hungry. But it's always just enough. Nothing else above it. Right? Alright? 
but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes in it. Same example I just gave you. Work so hard each and every day. And you running around with that bucket thinking it's full of water and there's holes springing out everywhere. Work so hard, but never get ahead. Alright, let's move on. So God can put holes in your bucket. Or He can seal them. Now, I know you might be running around today with a bunch of holes in your bucket, but God can seal them now. Stop procrastinating and do what you know needs to be done. Start taking care of whatever it is that God has blessed you with. Because I'm going to tell you right now, He will take it back. Look at old Joe. Boy, he lost everything. Everything. But at the end of it all, when he finally come to his senses and quit listening to his three knucklehead friends, he gained it back. Every single thing that he lost, he gained it back and then some. If you do not have God's blessings, you will never have peace. Amen. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, folks. Amen. If you don't have that, you ain't got peace. I don't see how in the world anybody does it. I don't. I, don't. I mean, sometimes it's all that I can do to do it. And I've got a great relationship with God. But we never have enough. How can God put holes in your bucket? You know, most farmers have a well on their property. Right? So when they've got that well and all of a sudden there's a big electrical storm and the, and the lightning strikes the pump. Well, now them, tough, them pumps ain't cheap. Not to mention the pump's probably three to $500. Then you have to pl uh, uh, pay a plumber if you don't know how to do it. An electrician to wire it to put it in and all that. So God's putting holes in this old boy's bucket for whatever it is that he's doing wrong. But now let's look at the flip side of this. What about the guy that sells water pumps? Well pumps. He's going to make a sale on a well pump. He's doing good. He's going to make some money on that. That's the way it is. God can either put the holes in your bucket or He can seal them for you. Amen. Mm. Alright, verse 7. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Do some self-examination in your life. Yes. If you think you're doing good, you know you're working hard, you may be even out doing a little bit of witnessing, but yet it's never quite enough. Just enough to get you by. Only you know what it is that's hindering your blessings with God. Only you know that. And only you can do that and rectify that with God. So what is it that you're procrastinating about today? We all do it. Alright, verse 8. I tell you another subject, and I don't talk about this much when I was doing this study. I don't talk about tithing very much. You know, I don't talk about it because 